Okay, so this reading is for Lesson 11.9, which is Grants and Federal Loans. <coughs> Scholarships. A scholarship is money for college that you will not be expected to repay. Scholarships are definitely worth seeking. Scholarships sponsored by colleges are often designated for students who fit a particular profile. For example, someone from the college's home state, hold a, if they hold a specific grade point average, if they enroll in a particular major, or if they have some sort of special talent. You will have to check with each college to see what scholarships are available. Other outside scholarships may be available to students whose parents work for a particular company or to students who are eligible for scholarships sponsored by religious or civic organizations. At the same time, though, be very wary of companies that guarantee or promise you a scholarship grant or fantastic financial aid passages, packages in exchange for a fee. Many of these are scams and you will simply lose your money and risk giving your personal information to a potentially unscrupulous business or individual. You can learn more about scams by visiting the S um, FTC website. Potential grant programs. Grants, like scholarships, do not have to be repaid and are offered to a variety of students. Let us look at some different grant programs. The Federal Pell Grant. Federal Pell Grants are usually awarded to undergraduate students who have not earned a bachelor's or a professional degree. Pell Grants are considered a foundation of federal financial aid, to which aid from other federal and non-federal sources might be added. How much can I get? The maximum Pell Grant award changes each year depending on program funding. For example, the maximum award for the 2010-2011 award year is $5,500. A student attending college year-round, for example during summer, fall, and spring terms, could receive as much as two maximum awards in a row during that time period. The amount you receive depends not only on your financial need, but also on your cost to attend school, your status as a full-time or part-time student, and your plans to attend school for a full academic year or less. If I am eligible, how will I get the Pell Grant money? Your school can apply Pell Grant funds to your school costs, pay you directly, usually by check, or combine these methods. Your school must tell you in writing how much your award will be and how and when you will be paid. Federal Supplemental Educational Opportunity Grant. The Federal Supplemental Educational Opportunity Grant, or FSEOG, program is for undergraduates with exceptional financial need. Pell Grant recipients with the lowest expected family contributions, or EFCs, will be considered for, so first for an FSEOG. How much can I get? You can receive between $100 and $4,000 a year, depending on when you apply, your financial need, the funding at the school you are attending, and the policies of the financial aid office at your school. If I am eligible, how will I get this money? If you are eligible, your school will credit your account pay you directly, or combine these methods. Teacher Education Assistance for College and Higher Education Grant. The Teacher Education Assistance for College and Higher Education Grant, or the TEACH Grant, is for students who intend to teach in a public or private elementary or secondary school that serves students from low-income families. You must be enrolled as an undergraduate, post-baccalaureate, or a graduate student in a field that participates in the TEACH Grant program and meets certain academic achievements and course requirements to receive a TEACH Grant. Additional conditions can apply. Institutional Grants Colleges provide institutional grants to help make up the difference between college costs and what a family can be expected to contribute through income, savings, loans, and student earnings. Other institutional grants, known as merit awards or merit scholarships, are awarded on the basis of academic achievement. Some merit awards are offered only to students whose families demonstrate financial need. Others are awarded without regard to a family's finances. Some grants will come with special privileges or obligations. You will want to find out about the, the types of grants awarded by each college you are considering. Federal Loan Programs. If grants and scholarships are not enough to pay for college, you can look into federal loan programs. 
If you think you need a loan to do your homework, ask questions and compare loans before settling on one. Your state's Department of Education and the college's financial aid department are good resources when deciding on which type of loan is best for you. Getting a federal student loan. Like other federal student aid programs, the information from your FAFSA is used to determine the types and amounts of federal student loans you can receive. This means that you must first complete the FAFSA before receiving a federal loan. Federal loans include Federal Perkins loans or direct Stafford loans, direct loans. Federal Perkins loans. A Federal Perkins loan or a Perkins loan is a low interest or 5% loan for students with exceptional financial need. If your school participates in the Federal Perkins loan program, the loan will be made through the school's financial aid office in your school or the school's loan office servicer. will inform you about your eligibility. Your school is your leader, lender, and the loan is made with government funds. You will have to sign a promissory note, a legally binding document, that lists the conditions under which you are borrowing and the terms under which you agree to repay your loan. How much can I borrow? You can borrow up to 5500 for each year of undergraduate study. The total you can borrow as an undergraduate is $27,500. For graduate studies, you can borrow up to $8,000 a year. The total you can borrow as a graduate is $60,000, which includes amounts borrowed as an undergraduate. The amount you receive depends on when you apply for the loan, your financial need, and the funding level at the school. Your school will either pay you directly, usually by check, or apply your loan to your school car charges. Other than interest, is there a charge for this loan? No, there aren't any other charges. However, if you skip a payment, your payment is late, or you make less than a full payment, you might have to pay a late charge and collection costs. Direct Stafford Loans, Direct Loans. Direct loans from the William D. Ford Federal District Loan Direct Loan Program are low interest loans for eligible students to borrow directly from the U.S. Department of Education of participating schools. There are several different types of direct loans. Direct subsidized loan. You are not charged interest while you are at school, at least half time, and during grace periods and deferment periods. Direct unsubsidized loan. Interest is charged and accumulates on an unsubsidized loan from the time it is first paid out. You have the option to pay the interest on your unsubsidized loan while you are in school. Direct plus loans. These loans are for parents of dependent students and graduate and professional degree students. Interest is charged during all periods, beginning on the date the loan is first disbursed. Direct consolidation loans. These loans combine federal education loan debts into a single loan. How much can I borrow? The maximum amount you can borrow ranges from $5,500 a year for a dependent freshman to $20,000 per year for a graduate or professional degree student. However, the actual amount you are able to receive each year is determined by your school and may be less than the maximum amount. There are also limits on the total amount of your loan debt. Direct plus borrowers have no set limits, but cannot borrow more than the total education expenses minus any other financial aid received. The school will determine the actual amount a parent or a graduate or professional student can borrow. Other than interest, is there a charge for this loan? Yes. In addition to interest, you need to pay a loan fee that is a percentage of the principal amount of the loan. The fee is deducted before you receive any loan money, so the loan amount you actually receive will be less than the amount you have to repay. Repaying your federal loan. After you graduate, leave school, or drop below half-time enrollment, you have a period of time before you must begin repayment. This period of time is called the grace period. Your loan servicer will notify you when you have to start making loan payments. The grace period for each loan type will be nine months for federal Perkins, six months for federal direct Stafford. There is no grace period for a federal direct plus loan. Repayment begins 60 days and after the loan money is fully dispersed. In some cases, plus borrowers may be able to postpone repayment with the loan servicer. 
It is very important to make, sh to make your full loan payment according to your repayment schedule. If you don't, you could end up in default, which has serious consequences. For example, your credit report will be damaged and the ability to obtain new credit or even qualify for certain jobs may be jeopardized. Student loans are like real loans, just as real as car loans or mortgages. We have to pay them back. Therefore, do not borrow more than you need for school-related expenses that are not covered by grants, scholarships, or other sources. Tell your student finance, financial aid office if you do not need to borrow all the money that you are eligible to borrow. The less money you borrow, the less you will have to pay in interest, and you'll be able to enjoy more of your income once you graduate without having to worry about paying back as much debt. Managing your student loan payments. You will have several types of repayment plans to choose to help you manage your, your <coughs> federal student loans. You can also explore other options to manage your loan payments after graduation, for example, loan consolidation. Be sure to fully research the pros and cons of consolidation before signing any paperwork. Student loan consolidation can be used too. Reduce your monthly student loan payment, however, like a car loan, extending the years of repayment increases the total amount you have to repay. Simplify your finances by making one pay payment per month. The U.S. Department of Education's National Student Loan Data System, or NSLDS, provides information on any federal loans you receive. However, this system does not include information on any private loans you can receive. So that concludes the reading. You're going to go back to the lesson and complete the activity present there.